my beautiful Rosara and her sister Beatrice on the balcony. They've come out to hear the serenade. Bigella, she'll hear my song. This is perfect. What is so perfect? How will she know it's your song? How will she know you love her? You're a strange one, you know that? Master, your love is as old-fashioned as liking the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> you stay in her house. You're learning medicine from her mother. You see her every day, but you don't talk to her. While they're serenading, when all you have to say is, I love you. Brigella, be quiet. She's going to hear you. Life is short. You're wasting it. Brigella, stop it now. If you can say something, at least do something to indicate it. Then you'll know how she feels. If she feels the same way, then good. Then it's the time for serenades. And then you won't be wasting your money. Maybe. Brigella, I warned you! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I had to do that. <laughs> but how many times must I tell you I won't be bold? I love Rosara. I'm in love with Rosara. But to tell her, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather die! Here we go again. <laughs> So you'll carry on like this, a shy lover to the end. Yes. No, no you won't. I won't. No you won't. Okay. Yes. You're right. I am right. You're right. I am right. Now is the time. <laughs> For what? For my new song, Brigella. Go over to the singers and ask them to start it now. Thank you. But before you do so, know this. This song is the very essence of my being. If my heart was melted into ink, that ink would write this song it is truly spectacular. Now go. Fine. And while you do that, I'll go hide somewhere in the shadows. The shadows? What for? So that nobody can see me. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe that guy? A shy lover. Ugh. And a serenade. Ugh. There <laughs> <laughs> you go, Mr. Beaver. <coughs> <laughs> Sleep. 
Just step outside and there's a serenade. They can have their serenades. Arlequina! I don't like their dry serenades. I thought you liked music. Yes, but only when it comes with food. Because where I come from, we have singing that we call eating, and notes we call bites, and the high notes we call burping, <laughs> and the low notes. The low notes we call... Who else call the Kino? <laughs> Two girls out there. <laughs> they look hot. Master, you should wear glasses because every girl looks pretty to you. Back in Rome, we swore that we loved Signora Cleonis. Who? The animal woman. Oh, the animal. Remember she looked like the animal? Oh, oh what was that animal? <laughs> that animal, what was that animal? You. What's your favorite animal? An elephant. That's right. With exactly. a long... Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Not here. And those two girls are here. And they're just standing there. Clearly, they're expecting something to happen. I'm gonna go talk to them. You mean you'll lie to them? They're not lies. They're clever embellishments. Whatever you say, but I think we should go to your father's house, Senior Pantalone, and let him know that we're here. He's at his country place. When he returns to Venice, then we'll settle down with him. What? You mean we'll have to stay at the inn until then, like tourists? Yes, and enjoy our liberty. No! Well then you must tell them I'm free to roam around and eat what I like, just like I went at home, because at home, you know I'd get my mama to make me some adobo, some bites, and some <laughs> All you think of is food. Let go, I'm wine, man. This is Venice at Carnival time. I've been away <coughs> for 20 years, and I want to have some fun before I settle down. Arlequino? Yep. I want you to go into the inn, and I want you to find out everything you can about those two girls. I want you to find out their names, their mother's name, what their mother does. I want you to find out whether they like chocolate or vanilla ice cream. But most importantly, their names. But that would take a whole month to find out all that. I'll give you ten minutes. Oh, and Arlequino, please, be discreet. How could I meddle into what's none of my business and be discreet? Because I'll beat you if you don't. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> more sex, more sex. Big, heavy wallet. <laughs> Sister, look at that man down there. <laughs> Where is Arlequina? I don't know what to say to them. For shame, Lily, you say anything. I am so lonely. <laughs> we must go in. And so rich. What? <laughs> don't be silly. Let's wait and see. But when two such resplendent stars give the night radiance, how could it be otherwise? I think he means our sight. When two such fires adorn the night, the moon itself must lose its powers and turn dim. He's mad, hearts in love. He speaks well, doesn't he? Were I to wish the ladies of old good evening, would they forgive me? We would consider it an honor. On a hot night like this, what a pleasure it is to breathe in the cool sea breeze. It's not the air we're enjoying, sir, but our liberty while our mother's away from home. Your mother's not in Venice? Yes, no, sir. Yes, sir! Do you know our mother? Oh, do I know your mother? We're the best of friends. She's gone to Padua to see a very sick patient. She'll be gone for days. So their mother's a doctor. How proud you must be to be her daughters. I consider her second to none, the best physician in all of Italy. Oh, how nice of you to say that. But um, who do we have the honor of addressing? Uh, a lover. 
And which one of us is so honored? <coughs> honored. One of you, one of you. But which one? My secret passion will soon flower. I may say no more. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Master, have you kissed those two hot girls yet? And silence, you fool. <laughs> Did you find out the names? <laughs> well, what is it? Spit it out, huh? What? One of them is Beatrice, and the other is Rosara. But I'm not sure which one is which. Fine, fine. <laughs> Forgive me, ladies. I just had to give some orders to my servant over there. Are you Venetian or just visiting? <laughs> I am the son of a noble Neapolitan. A noble Neapolitan? That's two lies in one breath. Then how do you happen to know us? I've been in Venice for almost a year now. Incognito? No, in Venice. <laughs> the inn has been my secret shelter <laughs> since the first time I laid my eyes on Signor Rosar and Signor Beatrice. I have been enamored of their charms. At first, it took me a little realize which were, a little time to realize which would make my heart beat a little faster. But at last, I knew. The choice is made. May we know, too. Oh, my heart must keep it secret a little longer. I have too much love. Yes, until he catches each girl alone. Sitting in a tree? K-I-S-S-I-N-G? <laughs> but, uh, may we ask the reason behind the secrecy? I, I fear the one I love may be promised. Oh, I have no one, sir. And I'm utterly free. All the boys in this town are losers. <laughs> And yet sermons are ordered to be sung into your windows. But I assure you, sir, I know not by whom. I cannot guess either, dear sir. Huh. I'm not surprised, but I gather you're curious and would like to know. My uh, curiosity has no bounds. <laughs> well, my curiosity is hotter than her. It doesn't even make sense. <clears throat> the serenade you just heard was but a humble token of my deep and everlasting affection I bear for my beloved. You insist then on keeping us in the dark. I must. You heard the serenade. It was the work of a shy and timid lover. That's how I am. Shy and timid. <laughs> we don't know which one of us feels so thankful. As soon as I've, as I've had the privilege of declaring my love, all of Venice will be dazzled by the parties I throw. Hotels, limos, donuts by the dust. <laughs> He'll be hawking his clothes any day now, unless his father arrives. I knew he was wealthy from the moment I set eyes on him. You know, it's probably you he loves. You've always been lucky. May we at least know your name? My name? Of course I am, after all, your humble servant. My name is... Don Astrobal, Marquis of Castle Dior. <laughs> Don Astro Boy? That's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> let's, go his, let's we lose his respect. Oh, yes, sister, we mustn't seem easy. Oh, With your permission, sir, the air is getting a bit chilly. Well, don't tell me your retirement this early hour. Our dear old nurse is calling us. Time for bed. What must be, must be. I am used to loneliness. I'll call on you tomorrow. You are very bold, sir, for a timid lover who shan't be home. Well, well then I'll greet you outside your windows. Well, that we can't refuse. If only we knew which one of us you prefer. As soon as your mother returns to Venice, I shall declare myself. Until then. My <laughs> 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 humblest respects to your lordship. Don Astro Valley, your humble servant. <laughs> oh, Don Astro Boy, I kiss your noble feet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Alec? You know, that went pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, I did. All of these lies, how do you do it? Lies? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Life has got to be lived, savored, enjoyed. Anything to make it more livable. Don't you see, I let you know? You better be careful. I smell trouble. Good night, ladies. <sighs> what a beautiful night. <laughs> Different girl. <laughs> There's a man down there. He's seen me. Saint Gavin to teach me. Teach me the history of love. <laughs> Why not try? You see me? He's coming over. I got this. <laughs> oh! You star of stars! <laughs> Standing in the bright firmament, using grace into the night like mucus and phlegm. <laughs> Right? 
you're gonna lie, why not go all the way? You only live once. <laughs> serenading all night and you've been wandering around. It's true, Brigella. I couldn't sleep from joy. The success of my serenade put me in such a state. I'm happy. I'm so happy. Come here. What? What are we doing? Put me down. <laughs> How could I have slept with all this joy? All this joy inside of me. <laughs> Sacre bleu, have you lost your mind? No. What success? Where's the success when you throw away your money and she doesn't even know that you love her? But Brigella. She listened. She liked it. What more do I want? Such modesty I have never seen. Okay, well listen to this. The other day, I overheard my own, my one and only Rosara, telling her sister how she longed for a new dress. So? So, now the carnival time has come, I'm dying to give her a present. Finally, a good idea and a chance to declare yourself. Uh, heaven forbid, Rigella, have you lost your mind again? Uh, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna take this purse. There's a thousand dollars in it, and you're gonna go to the s nicest store you can find. But you're gonna buy a dress. The finest and the most expensive dress there is. Have the merchant sent it to my Rosara, but on no account is the delivery boy to divulge who it comes from. Now go. Why not throw your gold into the sea? Why should I? Because as long as Signor Rosara doesn't know where the dress comes from, you're wasting your money. <laughs> <laughs> Give me time, Brigella. A day will come when she'll know all. Now go. Fine. And be sure to buy the finest dress? Oh, of course, the finest. And the most expensive. Of course, now get that in my face. <laughs> <laughs> There's paradise. That little balcony where I saw her for the first time. If she were to come out now, perhaps, perhaps I would have the courage to tell her. I would say, Rosara, I love you with all my soul. You. You are my everything. I cannot live without you. So my darling, have pity on me. Have pity. <laughs> I wonder if he saw me. I hope not. What a lovely balcony! <laughs> Architecturally speaking, is it not just lovely? I mean, look at it. Ha ha ha, lovely. <laughs> of course it is, Florindo. It seems to me I heard some poetic words. Such as? Expressing love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a physician. Look, I am a surgeon. Well, as a surgeon, what did you think of the serenade that was sung here last night? <laughs> serenade? I wasn't aware of any serenades. But you were seen out here while it was being sung. Well, well, I'm a sleepwalker. Sometimes I walk in my sleep. You see, I heard no serenades. I know nothing. I have nothing to do with serenades. He's getting more and more upset. I have no doubt now he had something to do with the serenades. Oh, well, I better be going. Good day to you, Octavia. Wait a minute! Florindo, sit down. Look now, we're friends, aren't we? I love Beatrice. You know that. We've talked about that before. And if you love Rosario, why not just come out with it? Why all this secrecy? I might be able to help. Listen to me, and listen well. I know nothing of serenades. I know nothing of love. I'm a physician, a surgeon. A lover, I am not! I don't believe you, Florindo. You look like you're in love. You act like you're in love and not with medicine, that's for sure. I know love, for I am handsome. <laughs> <laughs> My dear fellow, whether you believe me or not is of no consequence to me. Love, ha, I know nothing of. Women, ha, ha, I have nothing to do with. Love and woman, ha, ha, ha. I didn't stand a chance. 
So, Octavio, good day to you. It's obvious. The man's in love. And since he won't tell me who it is, it must be Beatrice. Why did I spend all that time doing that commercial for Old Spice? <laughs> you! Look at your man. Now back at me. Look at your man once more. Now back at me. I'm on a stage. From now on, I'll stick around and keep my eyes open. Octavio, is that you? Claudio! Oh. One, two, ha! <laughs> you remembered! Of course I did. I didn't know you were here. Are you staying incognito? No, in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> so you come home at last, huh? Arrived last night. Octavio, tell me, two girls live in that house. Do you know them? Two girls, huh? Be on your guard, Octavio. No, I don't know them. Huh, too bad. Lovely girls. One's called Rosar, and the other, Beatrice. And they're both in love with me. They're what? In love with me. Both of them? Both. Shouldn't they be? But, Lavio, you just arrived yesterday. How, when did you manage to make them fall in love with you? It seemed like love at first sight. No sooner had they seen me than they started flirting right then and there. Hi. Our mother's not home right now. <laughs> Could this be true? And no sooner had I spoken than they were bewitched. They admitted it right away. Well, not both of them. Both, I tell you. Both. Oh, I'm trembling with rage. They invited me up to their room, but it was getting late, so I declined. However, I did manage to dazzle them with a serenade. You had a serenade sung for them? Exactly. That's precisely what I did. So he was responsible for the serenade. Florinda wasn't lying after all. Late as it was, the serenade did not conclude the evening. Oh, is that so? The darling girls insisted that I share supper with them. In their rooms. How could I refuse? Well, we ate and drank and ate and drank some more. And then, sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Sitting in a tree? K-I-S-S-I-N-G? That's impossible. <laughs> you must be joking. Why should I joke? But how can I believe that two decent, innocent girls would take advantage of their mother's absence and open the doors to a perfect stranger and carry on all night eating and drinking and- Oh, really now? Really? <laughs> well, you're so ugly that you look like my master Lelio. <laughs> Look. Oh. <laughs> Carlitino, sit down. Right here? Yes, there. I'll tell you, please. Carlitino, where was I last night? What was I doing? What you always do when not looking for girls and not food. True, true. But did I not speak to two girls on that balcony over there? And did I not have a serenade sung for them? No, of course! <laughs> <laughs> and then, didn't I go into the house of Senor Rosara and Senor Beatrice? And wasn't there much eating and drinking? What? You had another supper without? <laughs> oh, that <laughs> supper! Yes! Much eating and drinking went on in the house of Beatrice and Rosara. <laughs> And wasn't the supper magnificent? It was grand. <laughs> Food like I have never seen. Ever! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you believe now, Octavia, that I was not joking. I'll tell you this, Nelio. You're a very lucky dog. <laughs> Stick around. You just might learn something. Oh, I have no doubt of that. Octavio, please. <laughs> If you do run into these girls, I beg you, be discreet. You're the only one in the entire world who knows of this. And please, let it remain that. Oh, yes, Thelio, I'll, I'll see you later. Go in peace. Beatrice! Rosara! How could you? <laughs> Did you kill the master?
bastard. You're headed for trouble. <laughs> Get out of my seat. Don't be silly. Just back me up and mind your own business. Look, Arlecchino. Two girls wearing masks. What for? It's carnival time. So? So in Venice, on the first day of carnival, all the girls go out in the street wearing masks. Well, how can you tell who they are? I can. They're the two girls I spoke to last night. Well, I think it's crazy to wear a mask. You can't eat. Food would, food would go all over your shirt. What a waste. <laughs> and wait, unless, unless you can eat with your belly button. I'm just too tired to hit you myself, so hit yourself. Castle Dior is in no need of a dowry. 
For 20 years, my father's been collecting gold and silver and dresses for girls about your size. This is all too much. All oh, this wealth, this grandeur, I can't believe it. If I could only be sure you're not trying to make fun of me. God is my witness. I'm telling you the truth. Isn't that right, Arlecchino? Yep. Very, very true. But when can I hope to have some proof? As soon as your mother returns to Venice. Fair enough. Until then, I will just trust my heart. And you'll trust me, I hope. I'm a man of my word, and I love you. Good morning, Venice! Good morning. Good morning. Why, I must say, that much for the doctor's house. Hello? Hello? Ah, oh, shucks. Apparently nobody's home. Who are you looking for? Why, forgive me, senora. Is that Dr. Balanzoni's house? Yes, it is. Who do you want? Why, I've come here to deliver a very special package for his daughter, Signora Rosario. That's me. What's in it? Who does it come from? It's a silk dress. My master said it was for you, but neither he nor I know who it's from. In that case, you must take it back. I don't accept such a gift without knowing who it comes from. I'm sorry, senor, but it's my duty to deliver this package in one piece. If you won't take it, let us knock on the door again and leave it by the house. And I tell you, I don't want your gift. But it's all been paid for. It's very expensive stuff, too. But who has paid for it? I have no idea. But it's yours. I don't accept gifts from strangers. She doesn't accept gifts from strangers. Yeah, she doesn't accept gifts from strangers. Yeah, she doesn't accept gifts from strangers. Oh, Preston, what's yours? I said no. She said no. He said that she said no. She said that he said that she said no. <laughs> Darling, you may abandon your scruples. The dress is from me. There! You see? Will you accept it now? Kindness to send me a dress. Yes, my dearest. But it was such a small gift, so unworthy of you that I sent it without note. Without fuss. What you talking about, Willis? That is the best dress and most expensive dress that money can buy. Ow! <laughs> After all, I do have some taste. I'm not going to squander my money on an inferior dress. I accept your gift with pleasure. Taste he may have, but money he does not. But my gosh, how he lies. Oh, and believe me, I am most grateful for it. I'm sure the dress is beautiful. Come, Vina, take the box into the house. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't I get a tip? A tip? Of course. Harley Keen will take care of that. Yeah, your tip's just back over here. <laughs> If there's anything I can do for you, anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, um. But I really must go in. My heart goes with you. But Beatrice, my sister, what will I say to her? For the time being, say nothing. Let us keep this secret from the entire world. Cherish it and share it. Just you and I. Like Romeo and Juliet, they worked out okay. <laughs> Dear wife, we have so much more to share yet. Wife? Oh, I still can't believe it. You have my word, don't you? Yes, I feel as if I'm dreaming. <laughs> that odd little man looks like the gentleman that spoke to me last night. But he isn't dressed like a nobleman. Something's fishy, but what? Isn't she something, Arlecchino? You know you're something. You know what I think? I think she has a secret admirer. Someone who's too shy to declare themselves. It would be madness not to take advantage of the situation. Look, master, there's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's as beautiful as yours, isn't she? Well, take the bull by the horns. The bull? Uh, I mean, <laughs> the cow. The cow. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, teach me a few lies. Oh, Arlecchino, it can't be taught. 
It has to come from within you. From within me? Inside to out. Inside the inside to the out. From the inside to the out. From the inside to the I paid you those fine compliments last night. <laughs> so you're the one who calls himself mm -hmm. Don Lysosomes, yes. Ribosomes, mm -hmm. Mitochondria, yeah. Nucleus Nucleus <laughs> Junior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, excuse me, but that gentleman over there bought my mistress a very expensive gift. If you loved me, you'd do the same. <laughs> I love you so much. Uh -huh. I love you very much. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> tell you what. Yes. Go. Go to the Ross. Okay. The Wieners. <laughs> or the Target, or how I like to call it, the Target. <laughs> <laughs> and buy the most expensive thing in the bargain area. <laughs> buy the, the, the t shirt, the shorts, the, the pantalones, the, the, the sapatos, and the hat. <laughs> but make sure it's in the discount area, okay? <laughs> Whatever you like, okay? You know what I think? Mm -hmm. Don, ribosomes, lysosomes, yes. mitochondria, nucleus, nucleolus, mm. junior. You're sick. I think mm -hmm. you're a yes. liar. She oh. loves me! <laughs> you went way too far. She'll never believe you now. Oh, well, if you're gonna lie, why not go all the way? Come with me again. I can't wait to run into Octavio. Oh, when he hears about this. <laughs> I thought you said kiss and tell was naughty naughty. That's for schoolboys. But to embroider everything so. Only to make the tapestry of life richer, Arlequin. And the rest of our lives more miserable. <laughs> Relatives as well. Mine as well. Are you there too? Are you there too, Doctor? Listen to me and don't run away. It's an insult, I'm telling you, to give me such a tip after bringing you all the way from Naples to Venice. A tip is a tip. I don't have to give you a tip. It's optional, not mandatory. <laughs> Quarter. 
It's all I have! Take it! <laughs> I don't want a quarter. Yeah, well, I don't want it either. <laughs> well, actually, it's all I have, and if you really don't want it, then I'll just, I'm just gonna. <laughs> oh, my head, my beautiful head. You, you shouldn't have done that. Oh. Hey there, big boy. <laughs> Who's a <that> big boy? <laughs> well, hello there. <laughs> hey, boss. I got it. I should have known better than to drive a scoundrel like you. And he calls himself a gentleman? What a joke. <laughs> hey, don't walk away. I'm not done with you! Come back and fight! Ah! This man has said he's come from Naples. Perhaps he knows of my son. <laughs> Not so big! Ah! Ah! Excuse me! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Ah! Oh. What are you trying to kill me? I'm, I'm so sorry. My dear old decrepit man. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, most honorable stranger. Forgive me for asking you a question, but did I hear correctly? Did you just say that you came from Naples? Oh, right last night, sir. Barely had time to rest. Well, you see, I have several friends and acquaintances from Naples, and I thought that you might be related to one of them. Uh, I, I am the Count of Angora, sir. At your service. Uh, my family makes sweaters. <laughs> my hopes were in vain. This man is not my son. Forgive me, Sir Count, for asking you yet another question, but do you know a certain Lelio Bisignasi? Lelio? Yes, Lelio. Do I know him? We're, we're the best of friends. Best of friends? Oh, yes. Dear Lelio, such a worthy lad, full of wit and charm and, and very, very hot. Yes, simply all of Naples adores dear Lelio. Especially the women, they can't leave him alone. Ah, heaven be praised! Thank you, Lord, blessing me for such a son. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Sir Count, thank you for your news. I'm so happy I could weep. Signor Pantalone, is that you? You mustn't weep. On a day like this, you should rejoice. Rejoice? Why should I rejoice? I am so happy for you. Happy, thank you. Why? Your son returning. My son? Where is my son? Sit, sit. You are overcome by emotion. <laughs> Poor old man. <laughs> where is my son? Don't worry. He's still here. Exactly where you last spoke to him. That's my father. <laughs> That's my son? <laughs> Sir Count, what does this mean? Uh... Uh... Um, uh, Daddy! <laughs> oh, it feels so good to be loved! <laughs> Into my arms, my son! You have no idea how I've longed to hold you in my arms like this! And you finally return back, back to Venice! Oh, let me hear one more thing. Do not ever lie to me again, even in jest. Oh, my whole life, Father. That was the first untruth I've ever uttered. You do believe me, don't you? Well, of course I believe you, and maybe the last two. Now look at you, 20 years and all. Flex, flex for me. Oh. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is all your teeth. That is all, that's all. Tell me, how come you didn't come home straight away? Oh, well, you see, Father, it was very late when I arrived, and I knew you were still at your country place, so I rested and night at the inn. See, you should have came home straight away, straight away. Well, unless we will go to our home and discuss important business now. Signor Cavio, ready well. Ready be there, Signor. Signor Otavio, is that you? How good to see you. How have you been? Hello, doctor. Poor old woman. She doesn't even suspect the disgrace, disgrace which her daughters bring upon her. I have news for you, Signor Otavio. I am marrying off Rosara! Is that a fact? My congratulations! I pity the man who takes her for his wife. 
And of course, after that, it will be Beatrice's turn. Oh, well, I'm sure she has many admirers. Of course, and many who would wish to make her their wife. Understandably so, it is an attractive prospect. I only have two daughters, and they'll be the sole inheritors of all I possess. Senor Octavio, you have on several occasions asked me for my daughter's hand. The time wasn't right then, but now I have made up my mind. She shall be yours. Thank you, doctor, but I am no longer interested. How's that? You heard me. <clears throat> Are you trying to get even with me, young man? I wasn't in a position to give my consent at that time. Now the situation has changed. Yes, things change, doctor. I too have changed. Give her to whoever will take her. I don't care. How dare you speak of my daughter as if she were trash? I have great esteem for her, for her mother, ma'am. But my opinion of her is something else. Explain yourself. So I know what I'm talking about, doctor. I probably shouldn't even open my mouth, but I can't help it. I'll tell you everything. You see, I still love Beatrice. And that is why I suffer so. If only you knew the way she's been behaving behind your back. <gasps> no. I can't bear this. What has she done? I know this will hurt you, doctor, but you must learn the truth. Last night, your daughters admitted a stranger into your home. <gasps> they ate <gasps> and drank, <gasps> sat in a tree. <gasps> K-I-S-S. -S -S. <laughs> no, I refuse to believe this slander. I can prove every word I said, doctor. Proof? Oh, you better have proof, or else I'll make you pay for your lies. I'm ready to confront you with the man they kissed. <gasps> He's just arrived in Venice, and the moment your daughters laid their eyes on him, they invited him into your home. No, my daughters wouldn't behave like that. But they have, I tell you, doctor. Now listen to me. From now on, this is your problem. And if you dare call me a liar, you'll pay for it. Oh, oh, no, my reputation, my honor, all oh, gone. My house, my beautiful house is in ruins. Oh, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, back down, Pizza I demand to know the truth. You must believe me, Doctor. Upon my honor, no one went into the house last night. So you are certain that my daughter stayed home all night? Absolutely. They did nothing wrong. They didn't invite anyone into the house? No. They didn't dine with a stranger? No. Do you know Octavio? Of course. He's the one who told me all of this, and he swears that it's true. Then? Then he's lying. I'll find him and make him explain why he would say such things. Poor innocent girls. <gasps> They've been treated unjustly. <gasps> Especially Rosara. She's been crying hysterically and won't come down. <laughs> what is it, my boy, that you shed these tears? Well, you see, Doctor, I'm in love. Hurry, love. Senior Doctors, hurry! The poor lady Rosara has fainted. Please come and help her. To the bedroom! <laughs> Hurry, smell her salts. There's no time. Hurry, Florido. You must resuscitate her. Mouth to mouth, CPR stat. Mouth to mouth, CPR? Here, take her pulse. And if she needs mouth to mouth or CPR, please do it. I will go get the bomb to rub on her skin. Rub on her skin? <laughs> Dear doctor, please don't abandon my mistress. I will help her if I can. Colombina, I will resuscitate her. Go fetch a blanket, a damp cloth, and a glass of water. Stop. Right away. St. Tony of Arugio, don't fail us now. <laughs> yes, together we shall save her. <sighs> I'm alone with my beautiful Rosara. No one sees me. I will take this beautiful hand. Yes, my dear one. Now let me feel your pulse. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Boom, 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 
not again. <laughs> ah! It's catching! <laughs> Swine flu, no. <laughs> Bird flu! SARS? <laughs> Leprosy! <laughs> I feel a lump. It's not going to be easy to get out of this agreement. Oh, please, Mama. I want the rich, handsome, castly one. Oh, yes, I know. But we have to have a better reason than that. Tell me, this gentleman from Naples, what is his name? His name is Don Astrid Valley, Marquis of Castel d'Oro. <gasps> a Marquis? My daughter? And a Marquis? He's been in love with me for a year and only yesterday declared himself for me and not my sister. He truly loves you. He adores you. You are certain that he wants to marry you. He has told me so. Well then, I must obtain proof that he has a fortune. Mama, don't believe my sister's words so easily. It isn't necessarily true that the Marquis loves her. 
He loves one of us. And I have reason to believe that he prefers me. He told me so himself. You little liar! Oh, oh no, stop it! Oh, oh, this is lovely! Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Believe me, I know what I'm talking Enough. about. Enough! From now on, you will both stay inside. Neither will go out without my permission. If the Marquis wishes to speak to me, I'll find <laughs> out which one of you is his favorite. However, if this is a fairy tale, you will both wish you had been born in Ladner. <laughs> so, sister, why do you believe the Marquis loves you? I don't have to tell you anything. You mean your little trip outside? In a mask? <laughs> you know about that? You little snoop. I know about a lot of things, big sister. Do you really think running around the streets hiding your ugly face with a mask will land your rich husband? Well, has he demonstrated his love for you in any way? Maybe he told me the same thing he told you. But maybe I returned his feelings more intensely. <sighs> You're out of your mind! I am not! spreading those lies about us. Octavia's the liar? Mama told me herself. Oh, that! If I could get my hands on him, I would slap and he would fall and I would stop and he would cry. No death could be too slow. <clears throat> Mistresses, here is the senior Octavia. You right? Black place, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Beatrice, Rosara, I'm confused. Who told our mother that we entertain a stranger in our house? I did, but... So what is Yes, but... Who told our mother that I conversed with a stranger? I did, but... Shut up! And who told our mother we attended a serenade? I did, Let me guess, you! Yes! And didn't we tell her we lingered on the balcony? Yes, but... Then you are a liar. <laughs> and you are a deceiver. Please, please, my perfectly chiseled arms. <laughs> I think so. Oh, ladies, no, please. No, that's, that's no. Oh. Scum sucking low life. Columbina? Yes? <coughs> Am I still handsome? No. I'm too sensible. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world hates me. Someone is surely a liar, but, but it isn't me, and I can't prove it. Now that I remember, Lelio was a liar when I knew him back in Naples. Lelio is a liar. Lelio is a deceiver and blinded by jealousy. I believed his slander. How will I make this up to Beatrice? Or her father, or her mother? 
I must face her right away and face her anger like, like a handsome man should. Is that you, Octavia? What are you doing in my house? Ma'am, I throw myself at your feet. So, you've come to confess your lies. What I told you was not my invention, but I believed it much too easily. Mm. An incredible liar passed all of this on to me. And who has done this? Lelio Bisognosi. Pantalone stand. That's so. He's arrived in Venice. He arrived yesterday. Curse the day! Where is he? He's at the inn. He astounds me. No sooner does he arrive in Venice, but he creates this mountain of deception. Did he know Rosara and Beatrice are my daughters? No! This is all disgraceful! You! And you will never marry my Rosara. Daughter, I beg your forgiveness. <laughs> Please don't blame me for all of this. Don't worry. I might still be a friend. Don't worry about a dowry. <coughs> no dowry. No dowry. Well. And doctor, look at this face, doctor. <laughs> Your grandchildren will look like this. <laughs> I don't care about losing the dowry if it means getting Beatrice. I know I can win her back because she's kind and gentle and good-hearted and... And I'm toast. Handsome, handsome toast. <laughs>
<sighs> oh, Aquino, I'm truly in love. Oh, that's great. Congratulations, way to go. No, I don't believe you. Believe me, it's true. This time I speak nothing but the truth. It could be true, it might be true, and it may be true, but I still don't believe you. Now, how could it be true, but you still don't believe me? Because I've heard so many lies, I don't even believe in the truth anymore. Listen to this. I am lying. I tell you if that I'm, I'm lying. That means I'm telling the truth. But if I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the truth about lying, so I'm still lying. So you, am I lying or telling the truth? Wrong. <laughs> And you over there, I see you two over there. If a tree falls down in the forest and there's no one around to hear it, does the tree make a noise or not? No. Wrong! <laughs> Philosophy. Oh, like, you know, come here. You're not gonna hit me, are you? Oh, no. Oh! That was a lie. <laughs> I tell you that I'm in love. Just look at me. My hair's all messed up. I sigh continuously. <sighs> I haven't eaten. Really? We haven't eaten. Really? Like I haven't noticed. <sighs> You're in love again. I remember that poor Signora Cleonese. Who? The elephant woman. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, she would always want a nose with her. <laughs> oh, please. Let's change the subject. <laughs> I'm in true love with Rosara now. And she's crazy about me. Oh, you bought me a nice dress. I think I love you. <laughs> oh, come on. I had to take advantage of that situation. I'm a guy after all. <coughs> you are the guy. But master, when will we be able to go into your father's house and get something to eat? Oh, can't you wait? You're such a pig. Oh! oh. oh Don't sorry. say that. It makes me... Hungry! <laughs> Rice and adobo with ketchup and chicken. Sumitang and lupia with a few langonisa. Tinabu <laughs> makes me get up and sing. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings out, when I don't do good. I simply remember my favorite things, and then I go eat balloons. <laughs> Master, why is it that you've never visited your father before? I don't know. He seems like a nice old guy. <coughs> Look, here he comes. Oh, a zombie! <laughs> My son, it's a pleasure to see you this fine morning. Father, well, I'm at your command. Um, Senior Pantalone, I would like to speak to you if you're still alive. <laughs> well, Mr. Zombie, I'm starving. <laughs> hey, you're looking at my brain, aren't you? Don't bother looking hungrily at my brain because it's widely known that it's extremely small. <laughs> Who is this man? He is my servant. Stupid, but loyal. Stupid and loyal. <laughs> well, he certainly is amusing. You know, I would be your personal buffoon if you fed me. Okay, that's Tell me something funny. Something funny? Hmm. All right. <laughs> One day. Yes. St. Pat's. We'll have a new school. No! But I'd better warn you, a fool with a full stomach is a much funnier fool. Ah, uh, you have a point. Why don't you go to our kitchens and help yourself to whatever you want? Senior Pantalone, I love you! Ah, I keep my word. And I'll keep mine. I'll go find some in the eat. Alright, <laughs> send that dog over to the chicken. Sinigang and Lumpia with a few langoni sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's certainly odd. Please, 
please sit down. We have some important business to discuss. I'm all ears, Molly. <coughs> Lelio, you are the only offspring of my house. I'm here today to talk to you about your marriage. You know, Father, I already have someone in mind. My son, if you leave the matrimonial negotiations to the father, it works out for the best. I am old. I know how the world works. Father, I depend entirely on your counsel and authority. Ah, because I picked out a bride for you this morning and signed the contract. What? What do you mean, what? It couldn't be a better match. She's a good girl from a good family, and I tell you now, she is pretty and clever. Now, what is, what is your thoughts about that? Father, forgive me, but I would rather choose my own bride. I'm sure you understand. Lelio, my son, it seems that you are lacking in respect towards your father. Oh, but can I at least see her first? You will see her when you two are married. Now what's been done is good. I am your father and there's no more to say. Looks like it's time for a little clever inventing. Uh. <laughs> my son, what is your answer? Father. I depend entirely on your counsel and authority, but I have a terrible secret and can no longer keep it. Ah! What secret? What? 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 I, I, I already got married in Naples. Married in Naples? Now you tell me this? If you'd at least written to me, spoken to me, perhaps I could have accepted this. But now you've gone off and married some, some floozy. Oh, don't say that, father. I married a good and honest young lady. From a good family? Daughter of a gentleman. Then why did you not tell this to me or my brother? Uh, because we, we eloped. You eloped already? What? The marriage is still young. Tell me, what is your bride's name? Uh, quick, what's that guy's name? The guy right beside you. Julius? Julius? Yeah. Uh. Juliusia. <laughs> Juliusia. Mm -hmm. Is she pretty? Uh... <laughs> what is her father's name? Uh, her her father. Yes. Uh, Don Shamalama Ding Dong. <laughs> Don Shamalama Ding Dong. What is what is his father's surname? Uh, Abla Kava Tabo Lava. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Don Shamalama Ding Dong, Alba Kava Tabo Lava. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> well, wait, wait, how did you meet exactly? Oh, she lives near the photographer's <laughs> shop and I wanted to see what would develop. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Why didn't you bring your wife to Venice? Uh, father. Grandfather. What? She's 18 months pregnant. 18 months pregnant? How is that even possible? <laughs> Twins. <laughs> well, the marriage is still young. I better go right to your dear father-in-law. Naples post trips tonight. My son, I cannot wait to see those grandchildren. Oh, that wasn't easy, but at least I'm free from that ridiculous girl my father had me promised to. The only girl I want is Rosara. I remember the first time I saw her. She looked so beautiful, my heart, my heart felt as big as Simon Cowell's ego. <laughs> my father wants grandkids. I'll see that he gets plenty, even if I have to make them all up. Children, let's go. Come along now. Time to visit your grandfather. Let's go, hurry, hurry. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Brian Jelena, you put that little boy child down. Yes, I know, but we already have seven at home. You too, little Madonna, I see you. Let the baby go. Little Barack Obama, come here. It's time to feed the parking meter again. Yay. Here's some change you can believe in. Say it with me now. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> See, all the grandkids you could possibly want. Let's go, let's go, come on.
No, it can't be. Why is this happening? No, I won't see you married to another man. I won't. I'll end it all first with this. It's a McDouble. <laughs> Twice the fat, half the beef, and part of the everyday value menu. <laughs> and with it, I shall end my life. Stop! Oh, that fat will give you a heart attack. Regala, Regala, she's gonna marry someone else. I can't stand it. Don't end it like this, my friend. Regala, there's no time. Here I go. One, two, three, no. <laughs> Sister. Oh, you must do something right away. I guess I could. You must. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? What? I'm gonna walk in there. Yeah. I'm gonna strut around. Yeah. I'm gonna look sexy. Yeah. I'm gonna show my muscles. Yeah. And then I'll spin. Yeah. And when I spin, she will come to me. And then. And when she comes to me. What? I will deliver this prompter totally and completely anonymously. And then I'll hide in the shadows. <laughs> You idiot! <laughs> Don't give her a poem! It's much better to speak to her directly! <coughs> but look, I wrote this poem with my own tears. And just listen, it speaks much better than I. Fine. <clears throat> to Rosara. I love my lonely heart, empress of my will. I have been lost in silent pride. But love you greatly still. And though I fear you love another and will never take my part, I beg of you to hear my words. I plead with my eyes and my heart. I am not a noble man. Fortune's not for me. Riches and treasure have I none. I title I'll never see. I'm destined to this common state. My job is my only pride. To worship you is my only fate. To dream of you as my bride. Oh, now, now I say to you, Rosara mine, the breath that fans my flame. Now that you know my love is strong, one day you will know my name. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> My friend, Sebo, it's very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. But it doesn't explain a thing. What do you mean it doesn't explain a thing? Nothing could be more clear. It describes me perfectly. Ha! It could also easily be him, or her, or maybe not that guy, but you get my point. <laughs> <laughs> you quibble too much. This poem is perfectly clear, and I intend to give it to her. Ha! You, you're gonna give it to her. <laughs> you make me laugh. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> well, I guess I am funny. Yes, you are. Because I'm not gonna give it to her. Then who? You will. Uh, no. I think it would be much better if someone's coming. Okay. Um, grab on the balcony. Throw me up. That is not the balcony. Shh. Miguel, what are you doing? We have to hide. Put the put it inside. Someone's gonna see you. There's no time. Ow! <laughs> A whole new world! What? A dancing glitch! Ow! <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> oh my goodness! What? <laughs> 
be concrete. Right, Miss I? I got you. <laughs> Help yourself. I mean, if poems are supposed to express strong romantic feelings, men only write me haiku. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I don't get poetry, only Rosar and Beatrice do. I'll just read it. Look, it's my beautiful Rosara. She's reading something with great concentration. What is it? Oh, this poem takes me quite by surprise. Permit me, senor. May I interrupt you? Oh, excuse me, senor <coughs> Marquis. I didn't see you there. What is it that engages you so? May I know? Combina found this poem, and it's addressed to me. Huh. Do you know who sent it? It isn't signed. Hmm. And do you recognize the handwriting? No. Alas, it is a gift from me. You wrote this? Yes, my dearest. I'm amazed. What, don't you think I have the talent? Yes, but I don't believe you wrote this one. Why not? Just listen to the first verse and tell me if this is yours. Idol of my lonely heart, empress of my will, I have been lost in silent pride but loved you greatly still. Mine and no one else's. Empress of my heart, something of my will. I've been lost in silent pride, but loved you, yada yada. You see, I know it by heart. But why silent when you've already spoken to me? Uh, silent because yesterday I barely told you but a hundred parts of my thoughts, so practically I've been silent. <laughs> okay. Let's just read on. And though I fear you love another, and will never take my part, please tell me who else loves me, who else has asked for my hand. I fear you love another, but I have no proof of that. But you say, will never take my part. What could you ever mean? I mean that you will never take my part because you take all, all of me, see? Yeah. Well, Senior Marquis, please explain these four lovely lines. I am not a nobleman. Fortune's not for me. Riches and treasure I have none. A title I'll never see. I'm destined to this common state. My job is my only pride. <laughs> and these are your beautiful verses. Yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, my dears. I'm not a gentleman, it's true. When I saw you, I had to speak to you. But I was afraid. Afraid that if you knew my common family history, you would ignore me. I am not rich. I'm just a merchant from Naples. <laughs> My big invention, the cheese stuff pizza crust. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> Can you believe she bought that? I'm awesome. Oh. <laughs> 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 No explanation. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the end. One day will you know my name. Uh, <laughs> and, and
and this is the day. Yay! <laughs> and this, this is the explanation. My name is not Don Astrobale, Marquis of Casa de Oro. My name, my real name, the name I use in conversation, the name my mother gave to me is, is, Ram Poponi. <laughs> Bando Femini Mini. What? Call me Ram. I would have never understood any of this without your explanation. Love always speaks in metaphors and figures. So even your name is a figure of speech. And yesterday evening I was feeling very poetic. And today you're feeling very poetic today? Today I've told you the truth. How can I believe you love me? I know nothing about you. I adore you. That's all you need to know. I don't want to be misled again. <laughs> Speak to my mother. You can convince her. I won't refuse you. But where can I find you? Hot! <laughs> <laughs> you can come right now. Start me. Yes, but then mother. go inside. I must obey. Hi, <laughs> Mrs. Balanzoni. <laughs> Now, if I can, I'll make a fool of the mother. Doctor, your most devoted slave. Your most <laughs> humble servant. Ma'am, I've fallen deeply in love with your daughter and wish to marry her. Aha! You liar! You deceiver! You scum sucking low life! If you are a man of honor, you will defend yourself. From this, my sword, my handsome, handsome sword. I guess I killed someone else. Whoops. 
I believe it was by the force of your lies. Yeah, I said it, lies. I can't believe you would ever lie to me. To me. I don't even know you anymore. It's all the same. It's yours. 60 bucks. What? 60 bucks? That is way too much and I am not going to pay for it. <laughs> you will pay for it. I won't pay for you it. You will. I won't. You will. I won't. You will. I won't. You won't. I will. You won't. I will. You won't. I will. I most certainly will. Here, take this money and I'll take that letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, any letters you want to send? Yes, I have a letter to Naples. Naples? Yes, Naples. Yeah, 60 bucks. 60 bucks, huh? <laughs> it should be for Mars for 60 bucks. That is way too much, and I am not going to pay for it. You will pay for I it. I won't pay for it. You will. I won't. You will. I won't. You won't. I will. No! <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you are doing here, so we are going to pay this by my rules. Is that it? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I will pay for it. Thanks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bonner, I've been looking all over for What have you been up to with Dr. Balanzoni? With her now? And her daughter? She's been flirting with me. Oh, tell me, did you organize the serenade? There was a serenade going on when we first met. She thought I arranged it for her and I let her believe it. And you made up the story of kissing her after the serenade. I don't tell stories. I was in her tree. So you died with her then? She invited me, I went. And you, a married man, you did such a thing? I know, I know, it was a mistake. I won't let it happen again. Oh, certainly was a mistake. So long as my wife doesn't die. <laughs> and why should she die? Meteor and snake butt, hangnail, black plague. <laughs> Anything for that. Do you even know who Rosara was before you spoke to her? She's Dr. Balanzoni's daughter. Exactly, and she is the one I wanted you to marry this morning. Her? Yes, her. What have I done? Now tell me if you were still a free bachelor, would you want to marry her still? I want her with all my heart. Please, Father, don't give up on the marriage. Don't abandon the pact you made with the doctor. Tell her, tell her a good match for her daughter. Please, Father, I'll die without her. Oh, my son, but you are already married. It's possible that my wife is dead. She was coughing when I left. Oh, Lelio, I want you to use your head and forget this, Rosara, and go back to your wife in Naples. Oh, for the love of heaven, no. Don't you want to see a wife? I'd rather die. How many wives do you want anyways? Are you a Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, you still have Julius C. F. Who? Oh, her. Please, brother, please, I beg you a thousand pardons. My son, my son. Get up, people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Julius uh, is a fable, a complete fiction. I'm not married. Tell a lie to me again. Tell me, is this the sort of schooling you received in Naples? First you return home after all these years, and even before seeing me, your father, you fall in love with a complete stranger. You pretend to be Don Astrobali de Castle de Oro, a millionaire, a nephew of a prince and brother to a king. You make up a thousand lies and beguile honest people, Lelio. Honest people. I, I just don't get it. No good Christian gentleman would ever give birth to such fantasies. Oh, but, but father... I don't but father me, Lelio. I am ruined now. I'm ruined. A merchant's success relies solely on his honesty. Father, I'm ashamed. 
I detest lies and abhor them. I am and always will be a lover of the truth. Please, Father, you'll never hear another lie pass my lips. For pity, do not abandon me. Help me to win back, Mazar. Without her, I will die. I will die of a broken oh, heart. My son, I want to help you, but I am truly afraid. If I tell you one more lie, may the devil carry me away. So then you are truly a free bachelor. No. I have every intention of belonging to Rosara. Then perfect. I shall discuss this with the dog. Yes. Well, by the way, you have received the letter. The postman delivered it this morning. A letter for me? Yes, a letter for you. It cost 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Who sent it? But yet, with your permission, I would like to read it. <clears throat> Dearest bridegroom. Dearest bridegroom. I'm still here in Rome waiting for you. Even though you have sent no letters for quite some time, I still believe in your love. You said such beautiful things to me in Rome. I have decided to come to Venice and bring you back myself. Remember your promise to get married as quickly as possible. Signed, your ever faithful bride, Lady Cleany Sansoni. I will die without Rosara. <laughs> Besides, father, it's not polite to read someone else's mail. I can read a letter to my own son, thank you very much. But it's not for me. She says she's coming to Venice. So what? Why do I care if she comes to Venice? Lots of people come to Venice. Why should I care if a terrifying elephant woman comes to Venice? <laughs> <laughs> listen to me well and listen good. Are you listening? You are not to step foot into my house until you fix this mess. You are going to go to Rome and make good on your word. Capiche? Ah, uh, capiche. Capiche. Let's go, king of liars. Let's go to Rome and make good on your word. Courage. This may not cost me my inheritance. Oh, I swear if I get through this, I'll never tell another lie again. So long as I live, I'll only tell the truth. Dawn! <laughs> <laughs> Daughter, what do you know of this Marquis Astrobale di Castel di Oro? Well, Mama, it turns out he's not a Marquis after all. Oh, so who do you think he is? His name is Ram Proponi Bandolfini Mini Mini of Merchant. He invented cheese stuffed pizza crust. What? Have you swallowed your brain? Do you have any idea who he is? Who then? Leo, the son of Pantalone. The one you intended me to marry? Him! Yes, that jerk. <laughs> Listen to me, my little disgraced one. Listen to where your poor judgment has led you. Lady Ignacy, the man who would have seduced you, is already married to Giuliusia of Naples. <laughs> Are you sure? I can't believe it. Of course I am sure. His own father told me. His own father? <gasps> no. <coughs> no. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> 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 wants to speak with me? Bravo, Octavio! You are a gentleman. Are you ready to marry my youngest daughter? Oh, yes! Yes! We don't... Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> then we'll summon Beatrice, and we'll hear if she accepts you. Beatrice! Doctor, I come to you ashamed and confused and begging your pardon. You, sir, are guilty of lying. Lelio, tomorrow you and I will have our discussion. And by discussion, I mean fights. If you still wish to be my enemy tomorrow, fine. But I've come here to wish for your daughter's hand in marriage. What to marry my daughter when you're already married? Who told you that I'm married? Your father has told me. He told me that you're married to Julia. 
the daughter of Don Shamalama Ding Dong Abba Kaba Tava Lava. Ah, <laughs> uh, doctor, I'm sorry to tell you this, but my father does not always speak the truth. You should be ashamed to speak like that. Do you ever stop, Lelio? I'm free. You're free. Yes. You have proposed to no one else. No. You're telling the truth. Of course, I wouldn't lie to you for a whole kingdom. Agreed. If Rosara still wants you, it's agreed upon. Yes. Yes. Yes, I did it, I did it! Oh, I'm awesome! I'm awesome! Don't tell me I'm not awesome. Come on, I'm awesome. No, no, no. Oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> marriage to go for. Oh, so you haven't proposed to anyone. A complete bachelor. Rosa, get away from this monumental liar. He stayed over in Rome for three months and has promised to a Cleonese and sell me. Impudent liar! Leave my presence immediately! Go! If I go, I will die. Tell them, Rosa. Tell them how I arranged that serenade for you. And then, and then how I wrote you that beautiful poem. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I must reveal myself. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one who arranged the serenade. <laughs> I am the one who wrote the sonnet. <laughs> you, you liar. You're not gonna believe that guy, are you? Rosara, take a look. The original poem, in my own tears and handwriting. Everyone, I was there when Fruindo arranged the serenade. And again, I was there when Fruindo threw the poem onto the balcony, aka the floor, in a wimpy way. What do you have to say, Senor Lelio? Yeah, we. Oui. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing my head off. This fool hasn't the brains to arrange a serenade, nor the wit to write a poem. What? He writes a poem only to throw it onto a balcony, I mean the floor, in a whippy way, and then hide away without saying anything? Ha! It's enough to make me die of laughing. You're a little late, Senor Incognito. Rosara is mine. Ah. She belongs to me. There's nothing any fools can do about it. You be careful. I know Kung Fu. So very do No! Come on, too! Come on, too! Come on, too! Come on, 
of his father. A villainous son, a treacherous son, who by the force of his lies has turned my house upside down and has played me his father, his own father, for a fool. Worthless son, disgrace son. I, I don't want to ever see you ever again. Because from this point on, you are now cut from the house of these agnostics. Doctor, forgive me. Mozar, please forgive me. Beatrice? I humbly beg your pardons. I guess. Now I have no choice but to marry Signor Cleanis. <laughs> oh my God! Lelio! on the gondola. Let's go. Stop.
so much for coming to our last show of the, our school production of The Liar. tradition where this play could have not been brought together with amazing people behind the scenes, everything. You don't know how much work it takes to make this, this possible at all. So we have a couple gifts we'd like to give out. You see all the costumes that we're wearing, all these fancy, fancy things. Um, two very important people have helped with these um, costumes. We would like to ask Miss Zimney and Miss Tynan to come onto the stage. <laughs> have an amazing DVD that comes out. So we'd like to thank a very, very important person to make the DVD possible, Mr. Grout. all of you know her. She is our senior stage manager who is graduating this year, Noelle Sidiego. <laughs> to get this show rolling. He has been put under so much stress and he puts up with all of us and there's so many of us. We would like to thank the man who has made this possible, Mr. Hughes. Thank all of you for coming and supporting our program. Um, these are your kids, these are your classmates, and they've worked really hard, and I think they've put together something really special. And we as teachers and educators are lucky to be able to work with them. So thank you very much for them. Thank you very much. I think in some ways more importantly, what you're looking at is the fruit of community. And that's really what it's all about. If I think of the, the dads who got together and built our, our first ever first uh, first double decker set ever, uh, <laughs> and all of the collaboration of parents and kids and alumni and it, everything it takes to put it together, and I just want to say thank you to the St. Pat's community, and I think this is a great example of what we can do. So thank you very much, and good night. <laughs>